Hello, it is Monday, September 19th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle today, so most likely the easiest puzzle of the week, or certainly one of them, a simple, approachable, themed puzzle for us to solve on what is Uh, Another strange day in the UK, there have been a few of those obviously in the last week, it's the funeral of the Queen today. And central London, I've been in central London a few times over the past few days, and it is unbelievably packed with people. I mean, the the, the size of the crowds in town for uh, the funeral, and I suppose the events leading up to the funeral is is, is difficult to comprehend. Um, So that, I suppose, in itself uh, says something. so anyway, uh, it is a, it is a sad day in that respect, but we're going to solve a puzzle. We're going to solve a puzzle, and that is our daily diversionary <laughs> uh, diversionary activity that we undertake. At least I undertake first thing in the morning, as I'm doing now. And so, uh, that daily diversionary activity has been brought to us by Jenny Montague, Gabor, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for helping directly support this channel. I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much to the five of them, and thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I appreciate that very much as well. And if you do that yourself, you will get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. You can find all of that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And uh, you can also join the daily solve discord chat server in a link in the description field as well. And finally, please do subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying these videos. Thanks to everybody who's done that as well. Oh, and like the videos. It's always the one I forget to say. Uh, do like the videos if you like the videos, I suppose. <laughs> if not, um, well, I'm sorry, you probably haven't gotten this far. So let's get on to the crossword. It was constructed by Leslie Young and Andrea Carla Michaels. Now, Andrea Young has constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. Meanwhile, Andrea Carla Michaels has constructed dozens upon dozens upon dozens. Uh, so we have a um, a uh, an interesting uh, pairing today, and we'll see what they have in store for us. It should be something themed, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Reference for a geography buff, an atlas, presumably. Get it? C, you might ask? And a tubular pasta variety, probably penne. Um, That's a very common tubular pasta variety. What about this? An orchard fruit. Apple is a common fruit grown in orchards. And a league of their own is a baseball film. Okay, a solitary sh- uh, sort is a loner, and a landline, e.g., is a phone. Here we have a routine medical checkup, and this is starred, which suggests it'll be one of our theme clues, and it also is pointing to, yeah, it's pointing to 14 down, which looks like a revealer, because it says implementable with expertise and, and <laughs> oh, I see, implementable with expertise and expert ease, or how the starred clues answers can be taken. So these This will be taken in such a way that it suggests something about the theme. So anyway, it's an annual physical, maybe? Routine medical checkup? Annual physical. Implement or how the start clues answers can be taken. Not quite sure yet. Sorry if you're seeing it. Unpredictable is erratic. And a makeup... This has a question mark. So makeup specialist... A liar, maybe? Someone who specializes in making things up? That's very clever. Haven't seen that one before. Casual Friday cast-offs would be ties. If, you, if you're in an office where you would be expected to wear a tie Monday to Thursday, you wouldn't on Casual Friday. Circle or hexagon, either one of those is a shape. And watch out for these or clues, because even though it lists two shapes, you might think, ah, shapes. But it's, an or, it's saying circle or hexagon. Only one of them is being referenced. So singular shape. Junk email is, of course, spam. Tortoise's rival rival in a fable. The tortoise and the hare is one of uh, Aesop's fables. And hiking trails are paths. Banking conveniences, for short, are ATMs, automated teller machines. And Navy's football rival, uh, Army. You hear a lot about that, the Army-Navy football football game. Um, the you know, training academies or whatever they are, the universities. <clears throat> okay. 
oopsies or mess ups maybe in sort of children's language. And tech support seeker, typically a user, user of a computer or software or what have you. How sweet it blank be loved by you. How sweet it is to be loved by you. There we go. I was thinking of the, of the wrong thing in my head. Uh, how sweet it is to be loved by you. There we go. And make a choice is to opt for the thing you've chosen. A spine tingling sense of things to come. Oh no, not sign. I read that. I'm reading all sorts of things incorrectly. Spine tingling sign of things to come is an omen. There we go. This looks like it'll be a theme. Yes, indeed, it is a theme answer. Cool get together with cones and scoops. An ice cream, I was going to say ice cream party, but it looks like ice cream soiree, maybe? Is that something? Ice cream soiree, very fancy sounding. Um, ice cream soiree, what is the thing that connects these? Uh, I'm not going to see it until the revealer, and then I'll be annoyed at myself. <laughs> Here we have Blank de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. So that's Dia, uh, Dia de, los, de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Um holiday celebrating the, you know, our, those who have uh, passed away and are honoring our ancestors and so on. Uh, outstanding obligation is a debt. There we go. Profit sharing reward, perhaps. Um, not sure. What about this? Some nest eggs for short. So nest egg often refers to a retirement fund. So IRAs are individual retirement accounts, which are um, tax advantage retirement investment instruments in the United States. Many a Yemeni could be an Arab, very plausibly, and pie blank mode, pie a la mode. This is, I think, primarily used in the United States to indicate pie with ice cream, a la mode, in style, sort of. Um, okay, Pompeii fallout. So Pompeii famously was uh, the... Um, you know, Pompeii, the town buried in, in ash from the uh, volcanic eruption. So fallout would be ash here. And whom one might not marry, no matter what. Last man, last man on earth, maybe? I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth, goes the, goes the saying. I wonder what the origin of that is. Used in many films over the past, I don't know, century probably. Profit sharing word perhaps is cash prize? Doesn't really seem like profit sharing, not a prize. Not sure. Let's keep looking. Signify. If something signifies something, it means that thing. So mean and aliens in brief could be ETs. Forever and a day, say, eons. And a poem of exaltation could be an ode. And here we go. <laughs> has pride of place in the dead center of the grid as the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword, the ode. And fuss and fanfare, uh, those are ado, a whole ado. Uh, there will be plenty of this uh, today at the, the funeral. Fuss and fanfare. Okay, being risked as in a gambler's bet is at, I mean, at risk is the obvious thing, but it's obviously not the answer. At, um, I don't know. I can't see it for some reason. Let's keep looking. First century Roman poet. Not sure. Ovid, maybe. Um, let's look at the downs. We try harder car rental company. Um, there's a car rental company called Avis. You see them at the airport. Um, so that would suggest this is Ovid. And then here we have High-flying toy could be a kite. And one way to reduce one's sentence. To edit it, maybe? So, obviously when you read this, it looks like a prison sentence. But the question mark indicates something punny is being achieved here. And what we're doing is we're reducing a written sentence on the page. We're editing it down. Here we have about one-third of Hispaniola area-wise. Is it Haiti? And let's check the cross on that. Let down for Rapunzel would be her hair, famously, in the fairy tale. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. So what was this? Oh, at stake is a gambler's bet being risked. Lack of objectivity could be bias. And if only... 
I wish, I wish, if only. Cash, so what is this? Profit sharing word, why can't I see it? That's infuriating. What about these short answers here? Beloved author Morrison, Tony Morrison, the author of uh, Beloved, and one's magnum opus is one's masterpiece. To fit together as gear wheel teeth could be to mesh gear wheel teeth, mesh together. Oh, cash bonus. There we go. And a chucklehead is a dope, I suppose. So here we have implementable with expertise. Oh, down to a science. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> is that what that is? Is it? Maybe this isn't ice cream soiree. That doesn't... Oh, ice cream social. There we go. Yes, I've heard that phrase. So, okay, I was thinking, <laughs> that one doesn't really fit, does it? So down to a science. So in, in other words, these clues finish in a science. So physical science, social science, and earth science. There we go. We have uh, down to a science. Boy, I have something in my throat. Sorry, I'm trying to end this video. Um relatively um, speedily if I can. So a heroic saga is an epic. If someone, if something comes through the door, it arrives, I suppose. And a lead into fix or fabricate, pre prefix or prefabricate, there we go. The sea of TLC is tender loving care and an Italian vino region is I am never going to remember this. I've seen it probably a dozen times or more, two dozen times in crosswords. Is it, and I can never remember if it's Asti or Asta. I think it's Asti. Yeah, here we go. Thriller in Manila Boxer, Muhammad Ali. There we go. And pending on a schedule is TBA to be announced. Uh, rubber Ducky's domain is the bathtub or little rubber ducky toy in a bath. And a flim flammer is a con artist, someone who deceives you for their own gain. Prized blackjack cards are aces. Zero in tennis is love, which doesn't derive from luf in French, as we learned the other day. Not out of the running. If you're not out of the running, you're in it. Let's just check these crosses. Girl in Wonderland is Alice. Alice in Wonderland, of course, by Lewis Carroll. Here we have the evil eye, a glare said to bring bad luck. And a cry between ready and go is ready, set, go. Where outdoor Christmas lights may be hung. On the eve, I guess. Eve of, of, a, of a house. Barn toppers could be veins, as in weather veins, to show the direction of the wind. And the Met Gala, e.g., is a big event. It is covered with great um, fuss and fanfare. Some risque communiques are sects, which is... This is, comes up in the has come up in the crossword at least twice, so it's it's becoming a sort of ordinary entry in the. I mean, not not crosswordy is not something that comes up all the time, but it has come up a couple of times. The museum wing perhaps could be an annex. What the nose knows is a scent, and brats and gnats are each pests. Well, they're both pests, not each. That would be an or, which this isn't. So, um. And then what is this? Venomous serpent and Antony and Cleopatra. There we go, an asp, a venomous snake. And that's it. All right, so that was the Monday crossword as, as promised, well, as implicitly promised by the reputation of the Monday crossword. It was, I think, a pretty smooth solve with a very simple theme. And as with, as with a typical Monday theme, we don't really need to understand it in order to get through the puzzle. I mean, the revealer does say, or how the starred clues answers can be taken. And actually, you know what? That saved me. Because if this had simply said, implementable with expertise and expert ease, it never would have, if, if this weren't a revealer that connected thematically to these other answers, I wouldn't have rethought Ice Cream Social. I would have eventually fixed it, but it would have been more annoying and more confusing as I crossed these other answers and probably got a bit stumped. So, so there we go. Thank you to today's theme for helping me solve this puzzle more quickly than I otherwise would have. So we had our annual physical, our ice cream social, and our last man on earth. 
And each one of those goes down to a science, physical science, social science, and earth science. So there we have it. A nice simple theme in a nice gentle puzzle for the first day of the week, exactly as requested. So uh, that's that for today's puzzle. Now let's let's look at a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And you know what? I think I maybe have not yet set these aside, so I'm going to have to find them on the video, which I will do quickly. All right. So NCIS, I was <laughs> wildly guessing as to the identity of that organization, I suppose, and it is Naval Criminal Investigative Service. I think that's actually sort of close to what I had. I can't remember exactly. And Kathleen Quinn explains, within the Department of the Navy, it is the Civil Federal Law Enforcement Agency uniquely responsible for investigating felony crime, preventing terrorism, and protecting secrets for the Navy and Marine Corps. So I, presumably that's on sort of coastal areas specifically, I guess. So thank you for that. And uh, blue, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Domeyer points out, Blue Christmas is an Elvis song. There we go. That was The clue was something like Christmas for Elvis, and, and it was blue. And I, I wasn't sure what that meant. I thought, it, I thought it had something to do with clothing or something like that, which maybe was what was intended for me to think. But uh, no, it's an Elvis song, and Blue Christmas I've, sounds familiar now that, I, now that I hear it. Nicole Hicks points out that amaretti cookies are traditional Italian biscuits with soft and chewy marzipan-like center and crispy edges. And that's what I was trying to think of. And I was wondering, so amaretto is the liqueur. What are the biscuits? And it turns out they have the same name. <laughs> Each one of them, singularly, is an amaretto. Uh, and then the cookies, plural, are amaretti, the biscuits. But it's, in, in English at least, and I'm... I'm, I'm less aware of what it, would, what it would be in Italy physically, but in the English language anyway, it's just, I suppose, become convention that amaretto is the liqueur and amaretti are the biscuits because you'd generally have several biscuits, but but one bottle of liqueur. So they have the same name. And uh, in each case, they referred, the, the name would literally mean a little bitter. So amaro uh, means bitter in Italian. And there, you know, there are Amaro liqueurs as well, which are more bitter than Amaretto liqueur, of course. And so a little bitter from the bitter almond. And um, anyway, that's what that is. So that's why I couldn't remember the difference. It's because in fact, it is the same word. Okay, 66 down Otis is a reference to Otis Redding, who sang Try a Little Tenderness that was mentioned in the clue. And that was the, the uh, sampled song, I suppose. Uh, so that, that I was unfamiliar with. Well, I was unfamiliar with the, the song created from Try a Little Tenderness. Uh, here's, a, here's a fun clarification. So Andrew Post, uh, Postnikoff says, the puzzle was sort of wrong about pterodactyls. Pterod Pterodactylus is a small-sized genus of pterosaur, which is what they're calling pterodactyls here. But the largest pterosaurs, like Quetzal, uh, Quetzalcoatlus, have wingspans over 10 meters. So in other words, the clue referred to pterodactyls with the 11 meter wingspan. And apparently that was a particular um, species or genus, I suppose, of pterosaur that was not that large. Ben Ward adds an additional <laughs> correction for me. And for some extra pedantry, Chris's mention of his childhood interest in dinosaurs is irrelevant here, as pterosaurs are flying reptiles and not dinosaurs. <laughs> so thank you very much for that indeed pedantic but scientifically accurate correction. Except I would say, if I was going to be pedantic in reply to that, I would say an interest in dinosaurs is not irrelevant to an interest in pterosaurs, um, because pterosaurs and other such reptiles are often um, studied and appreciated adjacent to dinosaurs. So if one were interested in dinosaurs, you could imagine being interested in pterosaurs as well, even though they themselves are not dinosaurs. So I'm not sure that interest is irrelevant, as you say, but I take your point. And um, there's a much larger, longer post. Andrew Posnikoff continues on that about, uh, oh, this is interesting. Ben Ward says, though, to hit, sorry, Andrew Postnikoff does say, to hit the extra pedantry here, 
Though dinosaurs is a valid name, as long as we consider the avian dinosaurs that are largely just called birds, we probably shouldn't use the term reptiles anymore to describe, uh, I guess, pterosaurs, as it isn't monophyletic in any way. And there's a, there's a whole explanation of why that's the case that I'm not going to read <laughs> right now, but but uh, interesting. Uh, let's see, I might cut this off soon. Um, Gary Britton asks, Chris, do you create New York Times crossword puzzles? No, I don't. Never have done so. Uh, let's see. Never have attempted to, I suppose. Anyway, I think that's actually, that's actually about it. So, um, thank you to everybody who wrote in. Thank you to you for watching this video. And I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Tuesday puzzle. Uh, it should be another relatively approachable themed crossword. Hope you join me for that. But until then, um, Please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday, wherever you are in the world. Take care.